What's up everybody, it's J.A. Brown. Just wanted to do a quick video today. What I want to talk about is the latest development in woke cancel culture. And that is this. They're canceling Steven Pinker. Yes, that's right. Steven Pinker is a famous linguist and cognitive scientist, the author of The Language Instinct, The Better Angels of Our Nature, Enlightenment Now, and many other books. Uh, he's very well known and sometime last week I believe uh, this linguist named Elin McCready who is a trans woman self-proclaimed supporter of Antifa and apparently doing research in something called Arcano Pragmatics wrote this, an open letter to the Linguistic Society of America. Now, Steven Pinker is, of course, a member of the uh, Linguistic Society of America, and he is on a list of distinguished academic fellows of the LSA, and also on their list of media experts. And in this letter, Elin McCready, and apparently the other people who are collaborating on it, it's just a Google document that anyone can edit, are calling for the removal of Steven Pinker from the LSA's list of distinguished academic fellows and their list of media experts. I'll just quickly go through the letter. Dear Linguistic Society of America, this is an open letter by members of the linguistics community calling for the removal of Dr. Steven Pinker from both our list of distinguished academic fellows and our list of media experts. We, the undersigned, believe that Dr. Pinker's behavior as a public academic is not befitting of a representative of our professional organization, that the LSA's own stated goals make such a conclusion inevitable, and that the LSA should publicly reaffirm its position and distance itself from Dr. Pinker. Introduction to the list of LSA fellows is one of the highest signals of prestige in the linguistic community. Often, fellows are seen as the first line of academic linguistic authority and trustworthy sources of linguistic knowledge. Lay people and members of the press reach out to fellows and media experts for official statements. We feel that fellows, therefore, have a responsibility that comes with the honor, credibility, and visibility allotted them by their distinguished appointment. Dr. Pinker does not live up to this standard. But why? What crimes did Steven Pinker engage in? What are his sins that now require him to be cancelled? Well, the letter goes on. As we demonstrate below, Dr. Pinker's behavior is systematically at odds with the LSA's recently issued statement on racial justice, which argues that listening to and respecting the experience of students of color is crucial, as is acknowledging and addressing, rather than overlooking or denying, the role of the discipline of linguistics in the reproduction of racism. Instead, Dr. Pinker has a history of speaking over genuine grievances and downplaying injustices frequently by misrepresenting facts. And at the exact moments when black and brown people are mobilizing against systemic racism and for crucial changes. And as an example of his transgressions, they have a list of six things, mostly tweets. Here's a tweet from 2015 about uh, the fact that people don't shoot blacks disproportionately. There's another tweet here in which Pinker says that the focus on race distracts from solving the problem of pol killings by police officers. There's also a tweet on the decline of overt racism in which Pinker suggests that uh, race relations in the US are improving, which is apparently not allowed. And then the letter continues. We believe our appeal to remove Dr. Pinker from the LSA fellows list and the list of media experts falls within the purview of the LSA because of the goals that the LSA has set for itself. In its public statement on race, the LSA encourages linguists to critically reflect on the changing nature of academic, social, cultural and linguistic understandings of race and explicitly states that there is no linguistic justice without racial justice. This stance requires that linguists actively work to promote equity and social justice in ways that benefit underrepresented scholars and communities of color. 
We believe that the examples above show that Dr. Pinker's established pattern of behavior stands in direct opposition to the LSA's publicly stated aims and the work they call for. We want to note here that we have no desire to judge Dr. Pinker's actions in moral terms. You are. Or claim to know what his aims are. Nor do we seek to cancel Dr. Pinker. That is exactly what you are doing. Or to bar him from participating in the linguistics and LSA communities. Though many of our signatories may well believe that doing so would be the right course of action. We do, however, believe that the examples introduced above establish that Dr. Pinker's public actions constitute a pattern of downplaying the very real violence of systemic racism and sexism, and moreover, a pattern that is not above deceitfulness, misrepresentation, or the employment of dog whistles. Oh, by the way, uh, dog whistles is apparently Elin McCready's main topic of research. Figures, huh? In light of the fact that Dr. Pinker is read widely beyond the linguistics community, this behavior is particularly harmful, not merely for the perception of linguistics by the general public, but for movements against the systems of racism and sexism, and for linguists affected by these violent systems. Sincerely, the linguistics community. And then the letter is signed by, I count... The letter currently has 609 signatories. I am recording this on Sunday, the 12th of July. And, uh, well, these people claim to speak on behalf of the linguistics community, as if there is even such a thing, as if there is such a thing in such a way that you can speak on behalf of all those linguists. What about the linguists like me? I'm also a linguist which is why I'm making this video to begin with, and I don't agree with this nonsensical letter. So, clearly they don't represent the linguistics community to the extent that such a thing exists in full. Um, but yeah, folks, this is where we're at in 2020. Um, I suppose the Linguistic Society of America is in a right pickle right now because, well, when you adopt such a statement of diversity, inclusion, and equity, or die, as your official policy, you open yourself up to these kinds of arguments that people like Steven Pinker, who is an extremely well-respected linguist and researcher, violate your, your policy. So, but apart from that, the reason I wanted to make this video is to draw your attention to this fact. Look, Jordan Peterson warned against this. Gad Saad warned against this. If you're not subscribed to his YouTube channel yet, by the way, go and check it out. He's really good. This is what happens when you get mathematics operates as whiteness. This started a few years ago in the universities, mostly in the social sciences, and since then it has crept into all of the other academic fields. It's gone into mathematics and physics. Shit's happening at Princeton, Princeton of all bloody places. And it has also made its way now into mainstream society, but at the same time it continues to spread in academia. It has now reached my field, linguistics, which honestly was just a matter of time before that would happen. Uh, actually, I'm surprised that it hasn't happened sooner, but it's exactly as James Lindsay says in this tweet, it's a cult. This is the cult of woke. And John McWhorter has also pointed this out. John McWhorter, who by the way is black, is a linguist and I assume also a member of the Linguistic Society of America, and he points out that this woke ideology is very much like a religion. It has articles of faith that you are not allowed to question, lest you be labeled a heretic and ostracized. And this is what's happening. That's the other reason that I'm making this video. The more important reason is, if you allow this 
to pass, if you allow this to go uncriticized, if you allow this to happen, you end up with a straight up totalitarian society. That's not an exaggeration. I am not exaggerating. So you really have to think, is this the world that you want? Or would you rather be, would you rather be like Eli McCready? Or would you rather be like Steven Pinker or John McWhorter? I know what I would rather be. I would rather be like this guy, Zachary R. Wood, who invited people he disagreed with, people with controversial viewpoints, to speak at university campuses, only to see most of those invitations get cancelled. Because talking to people you disagree with is exactly what a university should do. You should be exposed to ideas that you don't like. That's how you learn to strengthen your own argument. That's how you learn to think. Anyway, that's it for me for today, folks. I did this entire video without a script, so I apologize if it's a little sloppy in places. I just wanted to get the message out. I'm J.A. Brown. If you found this video interesting or helpful or at all useful, the best way to help me make more videos like this is to become my supporter on Locals and give me money. You can also follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. And of course, check out my website, jabrownswebsite.com. I'm J.A. Brown, out for today.